Hello everyone and welcome to week number seven. Uh, so this week we have two chapters to discuss again, but it's not going to be the entire chapters like it has been in past weeks. This week we have to talk about chapter 33, pages 704 to 721, and chapter 38, pages 858 to 872. It's very tongue twisting. Uh, so we're going to talk about how chapter 33 is going to look at the reproductive female system, and then in 38 we're going to talk about um, assisting with those procedures that are part of a female exam. So let's go ahead and get started with chapter 33. So again, 33 is looking at the female reproductive system, and the female's reproductive system consists of their primary sex organs, the ovaries, and the accessory sex organs, such as the uterus, fallopian tubes, vagina, vulva, and breasts. So let's look at each of those individually. So the ovaries um, are two almond-shaped ovaries. Uh, they're actually located on either side of the uterus, and they have two main functions and purposes. They're going to produce that ova, or ovum, uh, which is the egg, and then they produce our female hormones. Our uterus is a hollow pear-shaped organ that is located in the front of the pelvic cavity above your bladder. Now the uterus has three main functions. First function that it has is once a month it's going to go through a menstruation, which is where we actually have that discharge of blood. Second main function is it's going to provide nourishment and protection of a baby during pregnancy. And third function is that during labor, it actually is going to contract to help birth that baby. So it's got a couple of really important roles that it plays. Next, we have our fallopian tubes. And these actually extend from either side of the uterus and bend inward toward your ovaries. Their main function is to actually take that ovum from the, from the ovary to the uterus. Now, when we talk about your fallopian tubes, those are about four and a half inches long, and they're only about a quarter of an inch wide, so they're very tiny, but they hold a very important job. Next, we have your vagina, which is a tube that is composed of muscles and membranes. It extends from the uterus, and typically it's about four to six inches long. Now, your vagina actually has three main functions. First and foremost, it's the organ for female copulation, okay, or female reproduction. It's the passageway for that discharge of the menstruation once a month, and it's also the passageway for babies during birth. Next, we have the vulva, which is actually made up of five different organs, and which is it's more the outside external part of the vagina. So those five organs that it consists of are the mons pubis, the labia majora, the labia mina, the vestibule, and the clitoris. And the last piece of the female reproductive system I want to talk about is the breasts. Now these are rounded structures made of fatty tissue that actually protrude from the chest of females. Each breast has numerous glands that form 12 to 15 different tissue lobes. The areola is the dark pigmented circle area of the skin found on each breast. And then in the middle or in the center of each areola is your nipple, which is that raised or elevated area. Alright, so that's kind of the brief overview I have of the female reproductive system. Let's go ahead and switch now to talk about chapter 38, which goes into assisting with um, exams for the female reproductive system. So gynecology is the branch of medicine that actually deals with disorders and diseases of your female reproductive system. An exam for a female reproductive system will include not only a pelvic exam, but a breast exam as well. 
That breast exam will help to detect breast cancer. Um, what you'll have patients do is you, they will lie on their back. Now this, again, is something that the provider will do, but you may be in there for this exam, so it's important to know what should be happening. So for breast exams, patients will lie on their back with their hand, with one hand behind their head at a time. What the physician will do is he will then palpate or examine around the lymph nodes under the armpit. And what they're looking for is any sort of um, lump, bump, mass, any pain or discomfort, so that they can help diagnose whether there is an issue. Providers do suggest that patients start performing breast self-exams, or BSEs, starting in their 20s. Um, generally, we say that this should be done about once a month, about one week after your menstrual cycle. They suggest the best time to do this is while you're in the shower, um, because then your brain is already in that mode of thinking. So I always suggest it to my patients if they're not doing it, that's a really important thing for them because self-breast exams can help with earlier detections. Now, during the pelvic exam, there will be a both an internal and an external exam. The internal exam is done with a pap smear, and this really is to help diagnose patients with potential cervical cancers or HPV, human papillomavirus. As medical assistants, we encounter a wide range of patients while working in the gynecology office. Could be a patient with their first time visit for a pap smear, a first time mom, or maybe it's a mom who's had several children. You never know what could come through that door. But one of your tasks will really be to help identify the patient's problems and provide information to the physician. But you also get to prepare the, the, the patients for specific exams and to help explain procedures to them. All right, so this is where I want to stop for the overview this week. As always, I encourage you to read your chapter fully. Uh, you don't have many pages to read this week, so please read them in full as that helps prepare you for work throughout this week. Speaking of work this week, uh, you do have one discussion post, and this discussion post is a two-part discussion. Both parts should be answered within your initial discussion post. It's really important, uh, not two separate submissions, one discussion post with both parts. So part one, you're going to be discussing obtaining that complete history. You need to discuss what you think is the most relevant information that you need on a patient history form or a provider needs on a patient history form. You're going to explain why you think it's the important. Because if you just say, I think this is important, we want to know why. Now part two is actually talking about that breast self-exam. You will need to explain the importance of why you want to do it monthly, how it's performed, and the proper time that your patients should be performing this exam. Please make sure your initial post is done and completed Tuesday by midnight, and you need to have two classmate or two responses to classmates completed Saturday by midnight. For your written assignment this week, it also has two parts. You will need to su submit one Word document that contains all of your answers. Okay, so one submission. So part one, you will need to select three questions that are listed within the ANGEL assignment, and you're going to do some research on those. Try to pick three that really interest you or that you find interesting. You'll research those answers and you'll explain your answers. This part should be no more than one page in length. Part two of the assignment, you'll be responsible for calculating some estimated delivery dates, or EDD. You'll need to use Nagel's rule in order to um, determine that due date. There are five estimated due dates that you need to calculate. Please, show your work when you're doing this. Don't just give me the answers. As always, please make sure that your written assignment is completed Sunday by midnight. And lastly, this week, you have one quiz. Uh, your quiz is going to be based off of the chapter for this week or the chapters for this week. 
and it is 10 multiple choice questions in a 10 minute time limit. Your quiz is also going to be due Sunday by midnight. All right, guys, that is all I have for you in the weekly video. I hope that you guys are all having a wonderful quarter so far, and I will see you on Tuesday. Goodbye.